It just doesn't pay to be 205 pounds or under these days, does it? I'm not there yet. I'm Chris Wolf with the wrestling vlogger who always tells it like it is. Ah, November 2016. What a time to be alive. We were still reeling from the presidential election one way or another. Celebrities were still dropping left and right. Doubtful those two are connected in any way. And the Cruiserweights got their own division and their own show in the WWE. See, when the quite excellent Cruiserweight Classic was about to end... Triple H announced that the winner of the final between TJ Perkins and Grand Metalik would not only win a trophy, but would also become the first WWE Cruiserweight Champion in almost nine years. Two months after Perkins won the belt, 205 Live premiered on the WWE Network, and the so-called most exciting show on the network began. However... Despite the run of Cruiserweights on Raw and semi-decent ratings on the network, the Cruiserweights were not getting the love many, including me, thought they deserved. Case in point, as I've complained about many times, while the Cruiserweight Championship was defended on WWE pay-per-views on a regular basis, most of the time it was pushed to the kickoff show. You know, when the crowds were still filing in, grabbing their snacks and merch, and finding their seats. And sometimes, though not most, I admit, the match was equal to, if not better than, many of the matches on the main card. <clears throat> Pardon. Add, add to the fact that 205 Live was recorded before SmackDown every week. You know, the same way Sunday Night Heat was usually recorded before Raw and the days before SmackDown. And you can see the disrespect just dripping from every mouth in Stamford, right? Well, I only recently learned that not only is there a new Cruiserweight Champion in Leo Rush... I don't watch 205 Live very often, sorry. But it's been renamed the NXT... Cruiserweight Championship. It turns out that leading up to NXT's move to the USA Network, they decided to integrate the Cruiserweights into NXT to, quote, create more opportunities for the Lith superstars. And, you know, I, I guess that kind of makes sense to a point. NXT seems to be more popular than even Raw and SmackDown in some respects. And as I said before, those in NXT fight their heart out in order to get to the main rosters. And much like NXT, moving the Cruiserweights off the network and onto cable, even basic cable, will definitely increase their exposure. But what is the cost? Say what you will about NXT, but when you get down to brass tacks... They still operate out of one location for their televised matches. They still only have, what, five or six pay-per-views a year? And while they are usually better than some WWE pay-per-views I could mention... <coughs> <I'm gonna sell. coughs> Sorry. The production of those pay-per-views are still relatively lacking in funding, you gotta admit. So... The Cruiserweights went from battling across the country and the world to being stuck in Florida and maybe a house show in Georgia or somewhere else in the extreme southeast U.S. They've gone from 12 pay-per-views a year, even though most of the time it's the pay-per-views equivalent to a dark match, to six at best. They, to a point, have gone from their own show to sharing space with NXT. Which again isn't necessarily bad, but still, who likes to share the spotlight, am I right? You know, I feel the need to blame someone for this, for, for, the cruise, for making the Cruiserweights drop so much in popularity that they had to resort to putting them with WWE University. And I think I know who to blame. Enzo Amore. 
When he won the Cruiserweight title after leaving Big Cass behind, I and many others, I'm sure, believed Enzo besmirched the title, which was already regarded as a tertiary title to begin with. And he did nothing to help that image. In fact, when he was fired for alleged sexual assault, I dare say he dragged the entire division down with him. Not even Drake Maverick could save it. As is evident recently when Drake all but abandoned his GM duties for 205 Live to chase the 24-7 title. It's kind of like when Hornswoggle won the title in 2007 and a few months later was deactivated. Hardly anyone wanted to fight a mitt vertically challenged person, even for a title. And like then, the powers that be thought probably thought giving Enzo a title would mature him a little. Ha! So, the Cruiserweight Championship is now officially a tertiary title of NXT. And as I don't follow NXT on a regular basis, I'm removing the Cruiserweights from my rankings. I hope the Cruiserweights do get more exposure on NXT, especially on the USA Network. But now they're like every other NXT superstar. Scratching out a living in Orlando in order to make the main roster. Thanks a lot, Enzo. I'm Chris Wolf of the Wrestling Vlog who always tells it like it is. See ya.